Hello and welcome to another update video about XRP. So XRP also did enter here our support area here a few days ago. That's um, basically the unchanged wave count from the previous video. Um, and it's amazing, you know, yesterday it was, we actually reached here the support area in the wave two that we talked about in the last video. We talked about, by the way, a W, W, X, Y correction, reached it, reversed. Perfect, that's how you want it. And the last video was like five days ago or so. Um, so that, that worked out nicely. So don't cover XRP every day. We just don't get enough interest. Uh, don't get enough views to, uh, obviously we need to focus on what the community wants, right? And uh, there are never too many XRP views, unfortunately. But, you know, we cover it. Um, it's also generally just moving sideways. So it's not really high interest, I would say, and also not a great chart because it's just been moving sideways uh, since June overall yeah but it's still you know sometimes volatile and um we've got our you know xrp fans here so um yeah it, it did what we wanted it to do so it came down here in this wave w moved sideways in an x wave in a triangle formation yes yeah, so a wave x can be a triangle did highlight that in the last video a b c d e and um we can also i mean let's actually look if we reach the triangle target because don't know if we actually did that in the last video, if we looked at that. What you normally do, you connect the waves A and C, and then you connect the waves B and D. It looks actually a little bit like a so-called so -called barrier triangle, so like a descending triangle in this stage. Um, and what you do, you take the, well, you have to extend these lines basically to the, to the beginning, yeah, when the triangle started. And then we take the height of the triangle and we add that to the end of the E wave. Okay, that was here. And target, okay, nearly, yeah. It did uh, undershoot it a little bit, but the target wouldn't even have pointed us into the target range. So the target range here was, um, I think it was calculated. I would actually need to double check that. I think it was, let me, let me check. I think we used this length, yeah, okay. So I think we used here the um, FIP retracements, right? The 61.8 FIP, all the way down here to the 88.7 FIP. That was the support range for the wave two in this case. And we can also double check by taking the length of the wave W, we go to the high of the X wave. And you can see we reached a FIP extension that is sometimes relevant uh, in, an, in a so-called Y wave. Yeah, when we take those lengths, the 1.272 extension in this case, but yeah, you know, there are many ways of calculating target. Most importantly is that we reached the target range, we reversed out of it, and now we can make a call about, you know, what are we doing actually? So first of all, you can see that we are moving up in what appears to be an impulse at this stage, which is quite good. Uh, so um, anybody who entered maybe at the top area of the box can now move up their stop loss. Always recommend that. Take the risk out. I believe risk management is the most important thing in this current situation here. We can say we had a leading diagonal in a wave one here. Um, then we can say that we had a wave two here, A, B, no, one second, um, small A, B, C, that this was probably a third wave. Again, we have a one, two here, a three, a four, and a five in three, wave four, and we could now be on track to deliver here a fifth wave, which is just fantastic um, very straightforward now also to let me just draw it here to the end and then very straightforward now to define an end of this rally because what you can simply do um, let me just see if we say just thinking where the wave 2 ended did the wave 2 really end here Because the wave two could also have ended here possibly, um, but it, yeah, no, it could have. And then we would have, um, this was then an A wave. B wave could have ended here and the C wave here running f flat. Um, yeah, that's not entirely clear to me. It probably adds up better, l no. I think the two needs to sit there here okay um 
and what we could then do is possibly connect those lines and you get a nice trend line actually as well and dropping out of the trend line here to the downside would be a first indication in my view that this fifth wave is over now calculating the length of the fifth target wise we take the entire uh, net length between waves one and three and we go to the low of the fourth and you can see we've actually reached the first target is the 38.2 fib extension or oh, that's broken anyway the second target was nearly reached so we need to be because we are now in target range so here 39 cents is basically the you know one of the ideal targets for a fifth wave um we need to have it on the radar that it could end here this five wave move okay so we need to be ready at the moment against this um swing low here in fourth wave we can focus on higher so against 37.6 cents as long as we're holding the trend line but now it needs to be you need to pay attention because this trend line could break at any point we've got sort of five waves up ready complete yeah they can always extend and if we get an extended fifth another possible target might be the one-to-one -one ratio here the 39.8 cent level or even the um 40.4 cent level but then wave five would really extend a lot um at the moment i'm watching i'd be watching for a break of the trend line that would indicate wave five is complete could complete at any moment now not telling you it's complete already but it could do at any moment in time and therefore keep an eye on that trend line and um, it would be quite an early signal because the price is hovering just above that trend line now what would that mean it would mean that we have a chance that we are in this third wave here to the upside um which is you know not necessarily overall bullish i'm not telling you this is overall a bullish count but it would be part of that c wave within a larger b wave which would eventually probably come down so what i'm just telling you that i'm skeptical here that this is already a breakout into a bull run price action at the moment would suggest it is probably just a corrective b wave up which would which could still result in another low which doesn't mean you have to wait for that low it just means that um be on the lookout eventually there is no confirmation yet that the bear market low has been struck we're far away from that we're just moving sideways <clears throat> but you can of course trade those tradable lows you know that we had here um <clears throat> and we need now um we need to wait now for further upside here but in the short term obviously if we say we have five waves complete this all could form the first wave then we get a two three four five and it would sort of roughly happen like that um as long as and that's very important the 36.23 cent level is holding yeah so the the beginning of the wave one needs to hold this is the condition otherwise this pattern will break down it's important for your risk management and um, if we come down now in a wave two and it's a bit too early to confirm it but let's say the top is in place let's just pretend then the key support area that would be relevant for this wave two would sit between the 36 point 36.8 and the 37.6 cent level here basically yeah this would be relevant for a wave two okay and that's my update about xrp i hope you liked the update if you did please hit the like button leave a comment and subscribe and if you really like the content then please check out the channel membership thanks a lot for watching bye bye